Hey everyone, Golden Ninja 3000 here again. Welcome back to a brand new episode of World Builder Wednesdays, where every week I take a look at a new fan creation on the LEGO World Builder platform, powered by Tongle. Today, we're actually on the trending page because the world I'm going to take a look at has been climbing up, although it was published quite a few months ago. We're going to be taking a look at LEGO The Purple Book, which, which was created by the architect Julio 8. I believe that's how you pronounce it, um, I, I, at least I hope it is. And this world was actually published back in September of 2020, but the architect is still updating it, and it is one of the most creative things I've seen on the platform. So this world kind of falls into a bit of like a fantasy sci-fi genre. The synopsis is that a magical book brings anything the characters can imagine to life, and they're going to have to reinvent themselves and change basically for the better to transform their lives and get themselves to where they want to be. I don't think this architect speaks English. I did email with him. Um, sadly, we couldn't do an interview, although he did provide me with his interview answers. And so um, I think like sometimes the concepts can be a little bit hard to grasp, but most of what he's talking about is pretty universal. And like I said, I'm really excited about this world. I really like that idea of like, a, you know, a book bringing anything to life. Because, I mean, I, I loved stories like that when I was younger, and this really seems like it could be a fantastic thing for kids. So right off the bat, I'm sure you guys know what I'm going to say my favorite part of this world is, and that's the art. It is called the Purple Book, so accordingly a lot of the art is purple, and I really love it because I think that this is just like a very dynamic, first of all, a very dynamic drawing style for the minifigures. I've said this about other worlds on World Builder, but this kind of reminds me of a Monkey Kid because it's that 2D style that's still very clearly Lego. And I really love that. I haven't watched Monkey Kid, but I would love to see more things done in that same kind of animation rather than, you know, the Ninjago like kind of computer generated animation. But the art's just really exciting. The backgrounds are very simple, but they look great. I love how we have slightly different colors for some characters, and I will be doing a deeper dive on the characters in just a second. But, you know, we've got blues, we've got oranges, we've got the purple, we've got the green. Uh, but even just, you know, all of these other designs, f even for the book itself, this doesn't necessarily look exactly like a Lego book at first glance, but then you can start to see that it is, you know, like the actual older book piece that would kind of fold open and it was all like kind of a softer plastic. So I really love that because I think that this artist has struck a very nice balance between having art that's like very unique while also at the same time tying in very well to the Lego brand. So I'm going to jump in on a couple of the characters. We'll start out with Julio, who I believe is the creator of the world, and so it looks like he's kind of just put his own sig fig in here. I really love how detailed the characters are. You guys know it. I love it when they have, when the architects, you know, lay out in great detail, you know, like all these, all this information about the character, kind of in like the additional no character limit section. And I really like what they've done here. They have strengths, they have weaknesses, they have values, motivation, dynamic with the team, and then just like extra information. And this is a section that stands out to me, the additional information. I love that the architect has included that here because things as simple as what the characters like doing, what music they listen to, what food they like to eat, all of those are little things that really flesh them out much more. Like, I can't say that I've thought about that stuff for my own characters in the stuff that I've created, so I love that this person's passion really shines through. Like, you can tell how much they care because they give, you know, like, their characters a favorite food or a favorite song, which is from Clutch Powers. So I really, really like those little touches. The other thing I love are the minifigure designs, not just the drawn style, but the physical style as well, although there are some better examples of that. So this character is an alien, and I really love the minifigure design. Again, art looks fantastic, but over here, what I, what really stood out to me was the, the physical design. So I love the face print that looks, you know, accordingly Lego-like and also unique at the same time, but just, you know, like the hair piece, the hood piece being used here. Um, I, I think it looks very good, and I would totally love to see this as a minifigure, and not just because I really want that hair piece in this color after seeing it like that. I just love how much attention has been paid to this, and you'll notice that actually a lot of the characters come on little keychains here, so I like that the that the architect has thought about this, you know, it's not like, they aren't proposing straight up sets yet, but just the fact that they're like, oh, you could sell these minifigures as keychains, that's a great touch, LEGO keychains can be very popular, and you know, that's a really great way to just get like a product out there if LEGO didn't want to make full sets. And on that note, we've got this awesome character named the LEGO Man. The art instantly jumps out at you because of that classic red and yellow color combination, as well as the fact 
that the background is green, which is different from every other element on this world. And this is like a comic book character that these kids, because it's about like this team of kids, that the kids drew. So as soon as they get this magical purple book, they decide to bring him to life. I really love this figure. And again, a keychain design that looks like a fantastic figure. I just, I, I really want to own this now. It's kind of a no-brainer to me. Like, I don't know why LEGO hasn't done something like this themselves yet. Obviously, they have the monochrome VIP keychains, but this is something different, and I think that this would be perfect. And the architect knows it, too, because look at that. The reason to send this world into production, where else could you get a keychain this great? I love, again, that the architect's, like, humor is shining through, and you can tell... You know, this, this isn't a lifeless world. There's a lot of love, like, coming through these element pages. But enough with the characters. It's time to move on to some other element categories. And over here, we've got a, quite a few society elements. We have six. That's one of the highest I've seen on any world, and that's great. Um, you know, these are, these are great background. These really help develop the world. However, what I'm really lacking here is some art. I mean, we have Octan, but, you know, that's a Lego thing. It's like this, the Flui Corporation, which is tied to that alien and some other products that we'll see later. I'd really love there to be, like, some, some nice art piece for this. And you will see that we do have a lot of society details. Um, they have been... Oh, sorry, not, not necessarily just society. This architect, um, Spider Dragon 11... They've contributed a ton of details to lots of elements across this world. I always, I've been scrolling down on everything and I just keep seeing their little suggestions at the bottom. And so I love that you can see that collaboration is active. And I didn't really mean to go into collaboration this early, but there are no proposed elements right now, which I was kind of surprised by. But you'll notice that so many of these elements actually have element details incorporated. Uh, bad pick with that one. I was hoping that I was hoping that she would have some, but that architect has contributed quite a bit to this world. Another standout here is the history section. So over here we've just got like you know new logo update. That's just kind of you know like for the world builder platform. But these two, these are what I'm looking for on like so many other worlds. Really basic, short and sweet origins. So we have the origin of the pur of the purple book here. That's fantastic because if I'm reading a story about a magical purple book. The first place I want to go is I want to find out, like, you know, what the book's about. So I'm really glad that there's a way to get caught up on the origin. And there is more details about the origin in, like, some characters and stuff. But you don't want to have to go hunting through, like, every character to figure out, like, the basics of how the world works. And so, again, besides the origin of the purple book, we also just have just very a, a very straightforward summary of how the adventure starts. So you don't need to read the whole storyline about it. So I really appreciate those. I would love to see more of that on other worlds. We've also got some nice places here. I'm not going to spend as much time on places as I do with other categories, but I do want to point out that I love the builds here. They are 3D renders, and they look pretty fantastic. They aren't super complicated, but for what they are, I think they look great. Then we come to the storylines. No surprise, the storylines are very well developed. They're split up into like different acts, Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. It seems like this would be, you know, like kind of a weekly TV show like Ninjago, and I would love to see it turned into a TV show because, again, not no full scripts here, which is fine. I love the people that do full scripts, but that is definitely going above and beyond. Something like this is perfect because I just like seeing these episodes um, mapped out like this and, you know, even having the art in there. And now this one even has like a learning section. So those little touches really make it great. Beyond storylines, these three categories often give me some trouble when I'm like looking at worlds. That's not the case here. For transportation, we do have multiple vehicles, and I particularly love this build, which is kind of like a remake of an older Blacktron set. The, the one thing I'm missing here, again, as is the case with some of the other categories, is just more art. I'd love to see more physical builds here. For items, we have, of course, the purple book, um, which is, you know, it's great. It has a whole section detailed to it. And what I really love about this is that it's it's very clearly defined rules with the purple book because with something with like a magical artifact like this, you can easily go off on all sorts of tangents. And so I really like that here. It's like you can only use 100 points of energy per day. And so doing each specific thing takes up a specific amount of energy. That is a great, you know, like that that's a great rule setting for the world that the architect has created. This item is like one of my favorite elements in this world. It's a brick separator because this is what's used to like nullify the power of the purple book, which is just very clever because it's like a brick separator and that's what you use to like take away the power of Lego bricks by prying them up. 
This is in a medium lavender color, which we haven't seen before for a brick separator. So right off the bat, I love that because I love Lego pieces in new colors. Then the architect has suggested, you know, making it a keychain. Lego does that already with other brick separators, I believe. So that's great. But then they're even suggesting making a little brick built version as a poly bag set. This, this is once again, an example of like a small touch that elevates this world because this is a fantastic concept uh, like a $5 poly bag with a buildable brick separator, like give it to me now. And, you know, I, I like I said, I asked um, the architect the interview questions just over email and he told me that, you know, this idea kind of sprung up the idea for the whole purple book story sprung up around scenarios that he and his friends had like played out at school and I believe that they were like writing a comic about it and they would use like Lego pieces in some of the scenarios so after he discovered world builder he thought that it would be a perfect adaptation and so he pointed specifically to the brick separator as an example of how he made this idea work with Lego and we're always talking about integration with the Lego brand the brick separator is the perfect example of integration with the Lego brand because yes it, it's a book bringing things to life this doesn't have to be Lego but little things like that, by having a brick separator take away the power of the magic artifact, that is perfect, and I love to see it. And lastly, I do want to call out the resources section, just because, once again, this is often overlooked. A lot of resources here. Again, one of the highest number in any world I've seen. And this is what I'm talking about with the Alien, because the Alien has, like, all kinds of branded, like, drinks. So we've got soda, we've got tea, we've got coffee. Then we've got like the ice cream from the ice cream shop and these are really just these are simple little resources but again it's very nice to see i've been keeping an eye on julio 8 for quite a while actually i've noticed a lot of his worlds around here and i've loved a lot of them you can see you know he's getting in on the creative prompts with ninjago and marvel he's doing original worlds like the purple book and i'm really glad to see someone engaging so much with world builder now, he said that he started playing with LEGO probably when he was between 6 and 8 years old. He loved the idea of being able to create everything he could imagine with bricks, and it's enchanted him to this day. I definitely understand that feeling, and, you know, I feel like that's a pretty universal feeling with LEGO fans. And, um, and he said he actually discovered World Builder from a YouTube channel. No specific name, but, you know, a lot of people discover World Builder through stuff like that. And he said that he, he really saw a great opportunity here to share his ideas with other fans. And I love that he's sharing his ideas because, like I said, there are a lot of worlds being made here. Um, I think most of them are public right now. Yeah, I don't think there's any in progress, but he's contributed to a bunch of creative prompts. Like I said, he's got the original stuff. And I just, I, I really love seeing, like, again, just how passionate he is about the things that he's making. And it's not all original creations, too, because I asked him, you know, like, how he's collaborated with other users. That's something I always like asking people. And he said that he likes to see, you know, like, new worlds on the platform, and when he finds an interesting concept and he sees an opportunity to improve a minifigure or propose an idea related to the story, he doesn't hesitate to do it. Some of the worlds that he's contributed to have actually been LEGO Neon and Holiday Heroes. LEGO Neon was developed into the trailer for LEGO World Builder, and, and um, Holiday Heroes was, of course, the first like truly original fan production to go into development back in January. Um, so I, I think it's great that Julio's contributed to like these, these worlds that have been picked up. And just going through, going through the contributions list, you can see there are a bunch of little contributions. Unfortunately, I don't think you can see anything that was for Holiday Heroes because it's probably hidden from the site. But um, I don't know if this is for Neon or not. Yes, this is for LEGO Neon. That's why I clicked on it, because the background reminded me of LEGO Neon. And so I really love um, you know, that, that he's been contributing as well as creating. I'm really disappointed that I didn't get to interview Julio. Um, I, I want to find a way around that language barrier, maybe by using like Google Translate for future interviews, because I would have loved to talk to him face to face because I just I love this world. Again, I've seen his other worlds, but I haven't explored this one yet. And I'm so glad I took the time to because it is it is truly awesome. I asked him what he wants to see other users contribute to his world, and he said that he really wants to see some mocks for vehicles and buildings because he doesn't think that the current ones reflect the concept of if you can imagine it, you can create it, which is a central theme to the Purple Book. I would also like to see that stuff, you know, I try to give my own recommendations, and 
that's really the only thing I can recommend. I think that this world is pretty much, like, dare I say, perfect. Obviously, it's ever-evolving. He's continuing to update it. But I would really like to see some more art in these sections, even for society, you know, like, just some logos or something. Like, having this corporation with the drinks, like, led by this alien seems really interesting. Um, and I think that I, I really need to see a logo for that, because I think that it would make it a lot stronger. But if you want to create on, like, a world builder, you can just head over to the Create tab. We are running Pitch Fest right now. So if you have a world already, you can pitch directly to LEGO, and there's this little explainer video that I made with Eddie Beals, the creator of Holiday Heroes, to tell you how to do that. Or if you haven't created anything yet, just head over to Create a World, choose a prompt, we've got some original ones, and then we've got our Ninjago 10th Anniversary and the Live Action Animation Hybrid, which is for the next big LEGO movie. So I would love to see you guys contribute or just sorry just start creating on the platform especially for these prompts because um because you know lego is looking for ideas to fill those prompts but that's it for today so don't forget to comment like and subscribe and check out my website goldenninja3000.com i'll see you guys in more videos soon bye for now